Hey guys, welcome back to Quarantine Coffee and Jesus. I hope you are enjoying this new um, series of going through the miracles of Jesus. I think it's absolutely awesome and I love just hearing about it um, and learning about the different miracles because I think for me, like sometimes I read through the miracles but don't often like look into the why. Like you're like, well, of course Jesus would do miracles. Like, of course he has the power to do that. And you don't really look into like the why behind um, what Jesus is doing um, and why he did those miracles. So I think it's really cool to to kind of dive a little bit deeper and really look into that. Um, so today we are going to look at, um, I think a really cool miracle because um, it not only involves like the, the person Jesus helps, but then also a bunch of others. And so I think it's kind of, it's, it's just kind of cool to see how, um, Jesus like includes everybody and that there's much more to it than just healing this man. Um, so we are looking at um, when Jesus heals the paralytic man um, and his friends bring him uh, and lower him through the roof. So this miracle can be found in the book of Matthew. It's Matthew uh, chapter 9 verses 1 through 8 can also be found in Mark chapter 2 verses 1 through 12 and that's the the um, book that I'm going to be focusing on. I just um, I like just the way that Mark out, like writes out the the story. Um, so that's the one I'm going to be focusing on and then the last one um, it's also in in Luke chapter 5 18 through 26. So I would encourage you to go in and read both the Matthew and the Luke version of this story as well. Um, but we're going to pretty much park in Mark um, and kind of look at how Mark describes um, this miracle. So I'll read it first. So Mark chapter 2, and again this starts in verse 1. So, and when he had returned to Capernaum, after some days it was reported that he was at home. And many were gathered together, so that there was no more room, not even at the door. And he was preaching the word to them. And they came, bringing to him a paralytic, carried by four men. And when they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, why does this man speak like this? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately, Jesus perceiving in his spirit that they thus questioned within themselves, said to them, why do you question these things in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your, your sins are forgiven, or say, rise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed and go home. And then he rose and immediately picked up his bed and went out before them, before them all. So that they were all amazed and glorified God saying, we never saw anything like this. Okay, so what is happening? And, and Every time they said he in this, they're referring to Jesus. So um, it opens up when he returned to Capernaum. I'm not sure if that's how you actually say it, but that's how I'm going to say it. Um, so it's suggested here that um, Jesus returned home. So he was living in this town um, of Caper Capernaum. Um, so he was home and people started gathering and Jesus was just... He was in his comfort zone. He started teaching again um, and, and preaching the word. And then um, I think this part is kind of glossed over. I wish that they would have gone, gone into a little bit more depth because they immediately go into, and then they came bringing him a paralytic carried by four men. Okay, so <clears throat> just imagine this. So there were no cars, there were no ambulances, there were maybe a horse and buggy back then or a donkey I, I'm not sure but these men carried their friend and who knows how far it doesn't it doesn't lay that out but they had the faith they heard of Jesus they knew who Jesus was and what he had been going around doing they had the faith and the hope that Jesus was going to um 
uh, heal their friend. It also doesn't outline how long this man had been paralyzed. So this could have been a lifelong condition. He could have had an accident of some sort and became paralyzed. Um, we don't really know that, but we know that these four friends were really good friends and they carried this man to find Jesus because they had the hope that Jesus would um, heal him. These, these four friends knew or thought they knew what this man, what their friend needed most. And that was healing uh, to be able to walk. And of course, if any of us, like I think of my best friend right now, um, if she, if she couldn't walk or if she got injured in some way, um, we love to ride our horses together. If she got injured in some way and she wasn't able to ride or she wasn't able to do those type of things, I, I would want everything, like anything in me would want for her to be able to ride again. Um, because I know how much she loves it and I know how much. So as a friend, I'd be like, that's, that's her greatest need. She needs to be healed. And I don't know if I would carry her, uh, to, but I'd probably call at least like an Uber or something and we could go to the hospital and get her help. But these men knew what this, what their friend needed and they loaded up and they carried him, um, to Jesus. And when they got there, instead of being discouraged by a packed out house and Jesus is probably in the back of it preaching and there was no way in to this house, instead of being discouraged, um, sorry, my dogs are, I'm not sure what they're barking at, but they're barking at something. Um, instead of being discouraged by the, the house being packed out, they thought outside of the box. They were like, you know what? Nobody's on the roof. So here we go. So they climbed up this house um, and they started taking apart somebody else's house. They were so, they knew, they wanted their friend to be healed so badly that they took off the roof of the house and lowered him down. So you can imagine like everybody else, like in the middle of Jesus's talk, he's preaching, they're probably like leaned in and listening. And then all of a sudden this man like comes down from the roof. Like I, like I'm just trying to imagine this, like what an interesting thing. And they all look up and there's these four men like looking down, like, come on, come on. You know, we carried him all the way here, just heal him. Um, I mean, if I was the homeowner, I'd probably be mad because my roof would be destroyed. But, um, like, it's, I think it's kind of a comical scene, um, you know, that these four men are on the roof, taking it apart, and then lower their, lowers their friend down in front of Jesus. Um, and then Jesus, so Jesus sees that, and he knows that these guys carried their friend not only all the way through town, um, but up onto the roof to lower him down. Their faith was that much that they were like, we know Jesus will, will heal him. Um, and Jesus says, son, your sins are forgiven. Okay. Just pause for a minute. We know the rest of the story. We know in just a, sh a few short verses that, um, Jesus is going to heal him and he's going to walk out. But imagine these friends looking down at, at their paralyzed friend, like, okay, this is it. This is it. This is when he's going to Jesus is going to heal him. And Jesus says, son, your sins are forgiven. There's probably, I could just, you could probably hear a pen drop, a pin drop. Um, because they were like, uh, okay. But Jesus knew something that they didn't. Jesus knew that what this man truly needed. Um, and he knew that his need was beyond the physical. His need was beyond that, beyond being able to walk that, yes, that was a need, but Jesus, you know, saw his heart as well and knew that his sins needed to be forgiven. And so Jesus says that, um, son, your sins are forgiven, but I'm sure those friends up on the roof are just like, okay, <laughs> you know, like, uh, really Jesus? So are we going to lift him back out now or like what's going on? Um, and then Jesus, Jesus is a little bit of a rebel. And so I really like him for that. A little bit of a rebel and, um, you know, he's very, I feel like he's very witty and very like, he's always just a step ahead. Um, and so um, in verse six, goes on to say, so some of the scribes, so the religious leaders of the time, they were also there at the house. And they were like, 
who's this guy? Who's this guy saying that he, they can, um, that he can forgive sins? He's blaspheming. He's lying. He can't. Only God can can forgive sins, and they're not wrong. Um, but this is where Jesus takes authority and says, um, "Hey, like, yeah, who who can say?" Um, sorry, I kind of lost my place here. Um, so and so Jesus knows exactly what they're thinking. So again, he has just, um, you know, his spirit is very in tune to that sort of thing. And, and he knows what these scribes are thinking and he knows that they're going to question him. So he questions their question with a question, which, um, you know, is, is always so good. Um, because it, you know, it, it just turns it back on them. Like, Hey, hold on. Um, so it says, so in verse eight, and immediately Jesus perceiving in his spirit that they thus questioned within themselves, he said to them, why do you question these things in your heart? Which is easier to say to a paralytic, your sins are forgiven or to say, rise up and take your bed and walk. So, um, again, so it is easy to say your sins are forgiven. Literally anybody could say that because you can't really prove it. You can't really, it's just, you, it's, it's a statement that says, hey, your sins are forgiven. So anybody can say that, but, but you can't see it. It's a lot harder for somebody to say, take up your, your bed and walk and walk when they haven't walked in who knows how long, you know, it could be, it could have been their whole life. It could have been a couple of years, it could have just been maybe a couple of weeks, but for somebody who had been paralyzed to then get up and walk like there's a lot you can actually see the result of that that you see that they actually get up and start walking again so jesus asks them um which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to get up and walk and obviously it's like well yeah your sins are forgiven that's a much easier thing to say than tell somebody that because you can see the result um and so then Jesus takes the authority or, or lays out his authority and says, but that you may know the son of man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. So Jesus asserts his authority here. He says, hey, the son of man um, has the authority. I'm here on earth and I have the authority to forgive sins. And he knew that that's what that man ultimately needed. He needed um, his sins to be forgiven, but Jesus doesn't stop there. Um, then he also says right after that, right after he says the son of man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. He says, I say to you, rise up, pick up your bed and go home. And immediately the man rose up, picked up his bed and went out before them. And they were all amazed and glorified God saying, we never saw anything like this. So Jesus does two things here. He, he, he sees a man's heart and his ultimate need and forgives his sin. He also sees his physical need and forgives that or not forgives that and heals and heals that um, so that he's able to walk. So this man is, is leaving this house um, fully healed, a brand new man. And that's what Jesus knew that he needed. So we see Jesus's mercy in this, um, in this situation. These men come in carrying their friend full of hope, um, carrying a man who's probably lost his hope because he can't walk and he's paralyzed. Um, and, and Jesus meets them with mercy and he goes deeper than just that physical need because Jesus knows what each physical need is and he promises in, in his word that he's going to take care of all those physical needs. He promises that he's going to take care of the sparrows of the air um, and the grass of the field. Um, so he knows those physical needs and those are so important and he, and he will take care of those. And I can tell you from personal experience. So taking this internship, um, uh, we went from a two, um, a two income home to one in home come one home income because I took this in um, this internship. I quit my job and one of my biggest fears was like, we're gonna go bankrupt. There, we're not gonna be able to afford everything. And so I was like, God, I just, I need you 
to, if this is what I'm supposed to do to take care of us. And that was my prayer. And I, and it was really stressful doing that because we, we were comfortable. We were comfortable with, you know, the money we made and, and everything like that. And it was really stressful going from two incomes to one income. Um, but Jesus knows our, our physical needs. And I can tell you what, over this past year of this, of this internship, every need has been met. Um, from, from medical, unexpected medical bills to, um, unexpected vet bills to, um, <clears throat> like home repairs to home improvement projects to, to everything that we've needed and more. Jesus has met every single one of those needs. And so he sees those physical needs and he promises to take care of it. And I've seen that firsthand. And I think that is absolutely amazing. Um, but Jesus goes deeper than that. Um, and he's gone deeper than that um, with me during this internship as well, because he knows um, that there's a heart problem too, and that we um, that he needs to forgive our sins. Um, and and Jesus does that in the story, and he has continued to work on my heart during this internship. Um, he's pushed me to be a more vulnerable person. He's pushed me to be more open. He's um, he's teaching me all kinds of things about his character, who he is. Um, how much he loves us and that I need him every day. Um, that I wake up every morning and, and I can struggle with anger um, or either anger or numbness where I just don't, I just kind of want to numb out or I want to be angry about something. And so Jesus has really worked on my heart there as well of like, um, I have a better plan for you um, and, and we're going to work through this together. And Jesus um, has known that that is also my need and probably a more important need than, and than anything else. Um, and he's continued to pursue me and work on that uh, as I've gone through this internship. So just, just a little bit more about, about that. Um, you know, Jesus is so merciful and, um, and he meets people where where they are. Jesus is also bigger than um, like the rules and the boundaries that people put around him. The scribes and the, the religious leaders of that time, they tried to, again, they wanted to put Jesus back in this box, a box that they understood that they could, um, you know, that they could ultimately back into a corner and just get rid of. They were just, they were already tired of him and we're only in chapter two of, of Mark here, um, of, of the gospel. Um, they're already tired of him. Um, and they wanted to put him back in a box. They didn't want this Jesus thing to get any bigger. Um, but Jesus pushed through that and he, um, went outside of that and, um, he, um, asserted his authority to forgive sins and that, you know, he is the son of God. Um, and he's fully man and fully God, um, here on this earth. And he has the authority to forgive our sins. Um, so that, that's also really cool. Um, and then also, um, the other thing that really stuck out is just being as passionate about the healing as you are about the asking. Um, so I think a lot of times, especially in my life, um, I'm really passionate about the asking. So I was really passionate in asking like, God, you have to take care of me if I do this. Almost, almost demanding, almost like, almost like, like a two year old, like demanding something like, God, you have to take care of me. Um, take care of us uh, as I go through this intern internship and different things like that. And I bet you those those friends who carried that paralytic man were also of that same passion um, in asking and hoping and praying of like, okay, we are going to take our friend and Jesus is going to heal him um, because we know that he, do he does it and they're so passionate. And so like, I think the challenge in this is we don't know exactly what happened to this man after after he was healed or his friends um you know i just hope that they are as passionate about the healing and and the new life that this man walked outside of um as they were um as as going into it if that makes sense so you know they didn't just walk out and be like okay well i'm healed like life back to normal. I mean, it's not going to be normal because, you know, he can walk again. Um, but that he, he realizes what Jesus truly did for him in that house. And that even after this internship, I truly realize what Jesus did for us 
during uh, this internship that he not only took care of that physical need, but he took care of that motion, emotional and heart need as well. Um, and so this just shows like who God is. God is merciful um, and God brings hope. Jesus brings hope um, in situations and, and he does not fit into any box, our box, any religious leaders box, anything like that. He's so much bigger um, than the box we try to put him in. And he, he knows us better than we know ourselves. And he, um, desperately, or, and he is going to chase after those needs and he's going to meet those needs, um, because he's a good God and he's a merciful God. And so, um, I hope this was encouraging to you guys. Um, I think it's a really cool, um, you know, miracle. There's a lot to it. Um, and it's also very encouraging. So I love doing this with you guys. Um, and I hope um, you got something out of it. And I hope to see you guys all soon. Again, always reach out with anything that you need. Um, call, text, email, uh, social media, contact us. That was weird. Um, I am us on social media or however you contact that. Um, and yeah, we hope to see you soon. All right, thanks guys, bye.